Hey, this is Peter with AlphaChimp, and this is the third and final video in this series on Bloom's Taxonomy and Visual Knowledge Management. I told a friend that I was putting together these videos on Bloom's Taxonomy, and he thought I said taxidermy, and was wondering if I was stuffing animals with dead flowers. And I said, no, it's kind of the same, but different. So we're analyzing this model, and remember that uh, no model is perfect, some are useful, and I'm just using this model, this slice of Bloom's taxonomy, in order to audit the different tools that we use for visual knowledge management here at AlphaChimp, and it's quite fascinating. <clears throat> All right, so we've talked about personal and team tools for remembering data, and uh, we didn't really talk about understanding, and I was thinking about this, what tools do we, do I use, do we use for understanding stuff? And it really comes down to having a conversation, I think. So personal tools involve reading, journaling, sketching, whiteboarding. But uh, for understanding, I think it, it has to do with group genius and getting together and orienting on where are we, what's going on, what do we do next. Uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on the application side of the model. And this is the model that I based on the three-toed sloth. So these are the three toes that we use for applying knowledge. And so the first place we'll start is here at Analyze. And so I collected these tools. These are digital tools that we use to analyze. And my interpretation of analyzing is looking at all the parts and the whole and understanding the relationship. So for analysis, when it comes to website traffic, and how a campaign does, like an email campaign or promotion of one of our courses, we look at Google Analytics. And this is a tool that is very popular in the web marketing world and very essential. And for us, it, it, we don't just, we don't do the volume that really, uh, really necessitates that much analytics. It's interesting to see how many people go to our website and how many people uh, go to the different courses. But what is, uh, telling are the analytics that are part of our email tool MailChimp because in the analytics window the statistics and reports for each email campaign we can see who looked who opened um, an email who looked at it who clicked on a link and what action they took and we can link those actions to registering for different classes or taking action like signing up for our webinar that sort of thing so I find myself looking at this a lot the the analytics on the MailChimp uh, email tool and then another tool that we're just starting to explore kind of solves this middle area between the base camp you know managing projects and managing people's time and uh, energy so we all maintain our own calendars but this tool, 10,000 feet, was built for design firms, and it's really built around people. So it is project-based tool, but it deals with people and where they spend their time. And this was designed for kind of a, a design team or a management team to sit down, to look at a calendar, to look at the different projects, the different roles, the different disciplines that the people have, like web design or uh, copywriting or uh, web development and to indicate who's doing what over time and to make sure that their hours are loaded properly. So we're just starting to explore this, but I thought it's a really neat visual knowledge management tool for people and time as related to projects and work. So if we move over to the evaluation toe of the uh, model here, evaluation is for me is uh, really making a qualitative judgment of a go no go decision or where are we an orienting type of uh, question you know where are we in the process how are we doing are we doing are we behind are we ahead are we doing well are we um, are we having some trouble and this is um, this is a tool from lean manufacturing and the whole lean movement called the kanban board and in its simplest form, it's really just a visual tool that can be on a whiteboard or a piece of paper using post-it notes or scribbles. And it really just identifies 
What are the big things that need to be done? What is in progress and what's done? And in the Kanban philosophy, you really, you only have three things um, that pile up in your different vertical lists here. So you can have a huge backlog, like let's say over here you have a backlog of projects or to-do list items. But for a person or for a team, you really only have maybe three, maybe four to-do items and only three or four in-progress items and then three or four done items. And the rule is that you can't move an item from one column to the next unless there's a blank space. So you can't move something from to-do to in-progress unless that thing that was here in progress has moved to done. So it's a, it's a nice uh, visual tool to use, especially with teams, to have a check-in say, okay, what's on our big to-do list for this week? What's in progress? Is anything that, that we see in progress, is that actually done? Can we move it out of the way? These two digital tools, SurveyMonkey and Doodle, are online survey tools. SurveyMonkey is very flexible and can be built around any topic and can involve um, fill in the blank and multiple choice types of questions for surveys and some, some deep analytics. Doodle is really just a calorie, calorie, a scheduling tool. <laughs> so Doodle is used to um, report to a group, hey, we're trying to schedule something. Here are the different slots and times that are available. Here are the different individuals who we need to schedule. Which times are best for you? So I can log into a Doodle poll and I can say, I'm good with this, this, and this. And then Daniel can log in and he can say, well, I'm free with this time slot and this time slot and this time slot. And somebody else can log in and say, I'm only available here. And so it's a visual tool that allows a team to identify the common time slot that everybody is available or the, the bulk of the people are available and great for distributed teams or clients. All right, so we have analyzing data information. We have evaluating where we are in a process or what uh, the negative spaces are. And then there's creation, which is the most fun part. And of course, there's so many tools that are free, that are online. There are uh, the social media and microblogging tools of Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter. There are the video platforms of Vimeo and YouTube. And then there's the emerging field of learning management systems, these online pr uh, platforms that allow trainers, teachers, educators, studer, students, learners, subject matter experts to build and publish videos as well as other content in a holistic learning environment. And the LMS, the learning management system that we use, is called Schoology. And so that's what we've built, used to build our courses like the Rockstar Scribe course and that creative space. And then the old standard is the blog. And this is still, I think, one of the best tools that any individual or group can have, which is a publishing platform where content, video, ideas, images, um, links to all this social media stuff can have its single page. It's one place where it resides. So um, I hope this has been helpful, taking a walk down our path of uh, all the different tools that we use to manage knowledge as a small firm uh, with a distributed network. And I hope that uh, Bloom's Taxonomy, and especially this slice of the model around cognition, is useful for you as an individual and you, you as a team member to have a conversation about what are the tools that we are using now? What are the tools that are most effective? What are the tools that are dead that maybe we need to get rid of? And to have that conversation both as an individual and look at your personal suite of digital and analog tools and as teams. And then ultimately as a little organization or ecosystem. So we'd love to hear what tools that you use and please um, include them in the comments. Thank you so much.